Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to a gorgeous view after a snow here in April in Colorado. We have the 2021 Mercedes E53 AMG. It was really clean, but of course it snowed, so now it's really dirty. In this video, we're gonna go on a quick tour of the car and then of course get it out and drive it. The E53 is currently the top spec AMG you can get in the coupe. You can get, I believe, a four cylinder, the inline six that we've tested, the 450, and then now here the inline six, but in 53 trim. Uh, no 63 available in E-Class except for sedan and wagon. Certainly love that E63 wagon. But this being the top spec coupe you can buy, it's gotta be pretty good. So. Um, before we get it out and drive it in our three main driving environments, in the city, in the mountains, and in the highway, uh, testing its driver assistance, its performance in the canyons, let's go on a quick tour. So uh, back here, we'll start at the back. We have quad exhaust. They are real, by the way, which is super nice. This is your backup camera. It's also your trunk release. So when you put it in reverse, the Mercedes logo flips open. Fairly good trunk here, really sizable. Take a look in there. You can see you can go all the way back to the seats, really nice good size trunk and it is power open and closed, which is a bit unnecessary, but nice for sure. Coming around the side, you can see here, it's about the same length as the sedan, but you're losing the rear doors. People buy coupes for, you know, style and that's really it. Cause it doesn't really handle any better than the sedan, I think. Um, Personally, I'm not a coupe guy. Look, I, I understand the appeal, but for me, these doors are so huge. When you park in a parking lot next to another car, these things are like 15 feet long and you're like shimmying in. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty annoying actually, gotta say, personally, just the coupe. But for a coupe, this thing is pretty rad. So it is a uh, inline six cylinder, 429 horsepower, 380 pound feet of torque, plus or minus. And it's very similar to the E-Class sedan that we recently tested here on this channel. We've also driven this engine in the convertible form, in the E53 convertible. And so we'll be referencing back to that drive a lot since I just drove that a few days ago in Los Angeles. And now we have the coupe. On this car, we have some Michelin Pilot Alpine, I think they're five uh, winter tires, as you can tell. Still winter here in Colorado, much to my surprise. And it's all fed the power through a formatic all wheel drive system. I guess ahead of that would be the nine speed automatic. What I'm really looking forward to seeing is, is the nine speed auto here tuned differently than the sedan's nine speed auto. In the convertible, it certainly was. I know it will be here, but how much better we will test. So coming around the front, styling, gorgeous. I really love the, the looks, the proportions of this car, this vertical grille slats that you get in this AMG line. A really gorgeous, great bright headlights here. This one has all the adaptive cruise control, active safety, lane centering as well, which works really well on the highway. I'll show you a bit of that. Uh, very, very capable and good system. But overall, it's really a stylish coupe and actually priced quite well. The convertible that we recently tested was like $104,000. That's a bit much for an E-Class. This is $84,000 or $85,000. And, and now we're kind of in the realm of, okay, you're getting your fun weekend sporty coupe, says AMG on the back. Is it a true V8 mega AMG? No, the character of the 53s is very different from the 63, this is a much more sweeter engine. It loves to rev, it makes peak power all the way up at 6,100. Well, let's talk about the interior and sitting in this seat is almost virtually identical to the E-Class sedan that we went crazy in depth with. I'm gonna leave a link in the bio because I go through all of the technical details on MBUX. You can control this side of the screen with this side of the steering wheel. You control this side of the screen with this side of the steering wheel. You have tons of different modes you can go into from having your whole screen turn into your driver assistance. It's actually a fantastic uh, system. I'm a big fan of MBUX. I think this is one of the best integrated automotive uh, UIs out there. It's very technical, very deep uh, level of things that you can do, but it's accessed very easily. For example, here you can even touch screen it. You can gesture control too, so you can see it knows when I'm getting close to touching something and it highlights it. Uh, really neat. This particular one is not optioned with the massaging seats. I would do that, of course. Um, yeah, lots of great stuff here. And then of course you can even scroll down. Whoops, let's go here. 
you can scroll down and you get different themes that are created. You can create your own themes. You can put favorites on in here. Really nice uh, levels of integration. But I think the best part about this interior are the ambient lights throughout. So you, at nighttime, this whole dash lights up around the whole car. You get this beautiful strip. And then the air vents have in lighting. And because they're so detailed, sort of aluminum finish, but I think they're actually plastic. Um, you get this really nice aura of light coming out of each one of these dials all around as well, even the ones on the side. So beautiful cabin at night, probably one of the prettiest places to sit when the sun goes down. And uh, yeah, just, just a nice place to be. Let's try out the back seat. So Timon, you're doing a back seat review for us. Front seat is likely where a passenger would sit. How does it feel back there? Not terrible. My head can touch, but I mean, I've just squ lean a little bit and perfectly fine. Yeah, do you have like an armrest or anything? You have cup holders, uh, right? There's a button here. Let's see what it does. It folds the, oh. the well, ski pass. That's right there. Yeah, there you go. That <laughs> works. Nice. And uh, so no USB ports. You do have vents, though. Yeah, no ports. Yep, no ports. Okay, so not a long distance road tripper back there. <laughs> no. <laughs> Under the hood, of course, the inline six... Well, what you're seeing is a lot of plastic and that's just the case for most modern engine base, but this has some really neat tech in it. This is a mild hybrid car and AMG is transitioning to adding more and more electrification over the years to come to their vehicles, to their spicy vehicles, as I say. So let's talk about what this engine has. Well, we have an electric pancake motor sandwiched between the engine and the transmission. This is a starter motor as well. No traditional starter here. When you turn this car on, even for cold starts, it just whirs into life. No, did, 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 and then fire, it's just on. Pretty interesting to use the integrated starter motor. Uh, it can produce so much power, it actually doesn't care turning the engine on and off, so less wear and tear. And then this one also has an electric turbocharger. We'll talk more about that when we get it on the road to drive it, but essentially it feeds the big turbo, and we've driven other mild hybrids with that technology. So really lots of tech going on here. What it really means is great efficiency, really good throttle response, even at low RPM, which is quite hard for a turbocharger to do, especially at our altitude here at about a mile above sea level and uh, should mean for some pretty good performance at wide open throttle. So let's get it out, drive it in the city, drive it in the highway and uh, see how it does. So we're in the E53 backing out of the driveway right now. And uh, let's talk about how this car is powered uh, before we get into all of the insane amount of tech. Now I did like a 45 minute long driving analysis of the E450 sedan, which is same generation E-Class 2021, but that was not the 53 AMG, it was the 450. Same engine, roughly, uh, some internal differences. And, um, you can really get a feel for how comfortable that car was around the town. Now, a lot of what it was good about that car is still present here. However, we have the addition of another mild hybrid technology. So not only do we have that, you know, 120-ish uh, pound-feet of torque electric motor sandwiched between the engine and the transmission, we also have a uh, electric turbocharger and this is uh, technically not a turbocharger because it's not exhaust gas driven it's electric motor driven so I guess it's closer to a supercharger it would be the technical way of explaining it but this is a little tiny turbocharger that can spin up electrically to like you know 100,000 rpm some crazy number in a really short period of time and that feeds the big turbocharger to get on boost what that means is insane engine response uh, at high rpm well again feel that when we drive it in the canyons but uh, around the city it means lag is almost non-existent at low rpm so this is a car that's very happy to upshift at 1500 rpm even under like serious acceleration serious throttle so this is quite an interesting uh, uh way to increase efficiency and driver comfort keeping the revs low uh, really an interesting thing. Now we've driven mild hybrids that have just the pancake motor or just the electric turbocharger, supercharger thing, uh, but we've never driven them where we have both of these technologies in combination. And so EQ Boost uh, in this particular car qualifies as both that turbocharger and the pancake motor. And man, is the calibration nearly perfect. 
Uh, look, 1500 RPM, foot down, big boost, no lag. Very electric-like driving experience, actually. Uh, quite interesting. So, uh, because this is an AMG, uh, we need to talk about some sporty stuff on this on this video, but uh, that actually takes away from the in-town uh, driving experience, I think. So the E450, uh, I came away feeling very comfortable around town, almost the perfect vehicle to just cruise around in. Uh, really great size, great engine, nice and quiet, all the good stuff. Here, that's not so much the case. What we have is a much firmer suspension. Still an air ride with active damper as well. So we have two different damper settings. We have one and two, and this is basically Sport and Sport Plus on the suspension. Uh, right now, I have everything backed into the, the factory comfort key up settings, and you hear the exhaust more, you feel the bumps more, but we need to evaluate, is the trade-off of this extra noise, extra ride harshness, worth it for the performance we're gonna see in the canyons? That we'll find out. I haven't driven this particular car hard yet. Now, if you go back in our videos, we've done another E-Class, of course. This time, it was the convertible E53. Uh, same car, just with the uh, roof, obviously, being fabric, and the coupe feels much better put together, I think. Uh, you, much less wind noise, much less road noise, um, but with the top down, you got a great exhaust sound in that convertible, and it almost encouraged you just to rev it all the way out at every opportunity and make pop pop noises out the exhaust. This is a much more relaxed kind of car. Now, uh, let's talk about the, the throttle brake steering in the city, sort of that relationship between everything. Well, the accelerator pedal is quite heavy, as is the case for all Mercedes, uh, and responds unbelievably well. Very comfortable just to roll into it. Again, this car loves to sit at just, you know, 11, 12, 1300 RPM. Uh, quite a bit of engine noise, even with the ex optional exhaust set to quiet. Now I can either through the steering wheel adjustable switches, I can choose what each one of these do. For example, I can go through all of these buttons and then click on uh, with a little toggle, or I have most of the same controls here in the center console. Uh, personally, I'm not a huge fan of these steering wheel toggles. They look really nice visually until you touch them and they're plasticky and flimsy and it just feels very poorly built. It feels like one of those $2 Walmart watches you would buy here. I wish this was, I understand it's probably hard to find a supplier that can make a screen, it can do all this and they took what they could get, but it's just not that premium. So leaving everything in comfort for now, I just wanted to show you, you can adjust things. You can just turn the exhaust on and then you hear much more of that rumble coming through, that inline six, great smooth sounding engine. Um, around town though, you have auto start stop of course, and this is user defeatable. I have a button where I can turn it off. I don't like it off. At about nine miles an hour, typically it will just shut it off completely. And it will use cues from the radar system to determine if the car in front of you is leaving or stopping and it will alter its uh, shutoff program here, but just a very comfortable auto start stop. It never uses a starter motor. So the way this engine starts is with that electric generator on the back. So even cold starts in the morning, it just whirs into life. Uh, you don't hear it. It's just on <laughs> instantly. No noise, no drama, uh, very comfortable, and you do not feel this engine doing auto start-stop. I think Mercedes has done the best implementation of auto start-stop here with mild hybrid, and I think they've also made the mild hybrid system the most refined out of anyone in the business uh, that I've tested, which is now almost everyone. So great, great work here uh, around town. You're definitely compromising getting the E53 AMG over like an E450 or E300 coupe uh, in terms of ride quality, in terms of noise, uh, be keeping it quiet, just commuting. But I think the trade-off is going to be worth it when we get up into the canyons because uh, it should be a serious performer. Again, 420 plus horsepower. Plus, uh, I liked the convertible E53 that I drove in the canyons. I had that car in California, high altitude as well, actually. Um, but it was just so heavy. So what I'm really curious to see is, is this car any more fun any more dynamic than that convertible because the convertible was really understeery, no sense of oversteer, didn't really love it. Um, I guess one thing I haven't touched on that I really should is the drivetrain system. So I talked, I spoke about the engine, then you have a nine speed torque converter automatic that rips the shifts, buttery smooth, 
uh, driving around town, very crisp when driving it quite aggressively. Love this transmission, even more than the 450 sedan. The E450 sedan, again, nine speed auto. This one's just adapted where it's much more responsive. I really like it. And you don't give up any shift quality around town. Uh, and then you have a all wheel drive 4Matic Plus system that you can change sort of the dynamics of how it drives. Now, if you option this car with the AMG performance package, I forget the exact name, you can get like a launch control mode and a drift mode. This car does not have it. The way you would tell is if you see a Mercedes 53 with red calipers, then they've optioned it, then they have drift mode, and you gotta like put a whole sequence of buttons, pull the paddles, hit the brake while you hit the throttle, do all this stuff, and then you can go rear wheel drive only. This particular one's just not optioned for it, so we won't be able to test that out. And I kinda get why Mercedes didn't spec the media vehicles with this uh, extra performance package. They'd get them back with no tires left. But uh, yep, comfortable around town, good uh, good quality in terms of uh, build quality. You know, Mercedes is just just awesome. No squeaks or rattles. And this car has 6,000 miles on it of, of hard use, media vehicle use, and feels good as brand new, I would say. While we're on our way over to the canyons, let's talk pricing real quick and uh, economy, things like this that are practical speak. Uh, this particular car is optioned up to 86,460. And the convertible that we recently sampled was like 104, so a big spread. That car also had extra options like massaging seats that this car doesn't have. Definitely get the massaging seats, all the active seat stuff. Mercedes is one of the best uh, seat designers in the game. Option that if you're getting one of these, for sure. Um, and I think that car had heads-up display. This one doesn't. And that had like that matte paint job, the satin finish in blue. It was really neat. So we're, we're really taking a lot of stuff away. Uh, and, and that's a big price gap. You know, we're talking $20,000 for convertible with little extra options. And yeah, so totally up to you, depending on how you want to spec it. I thought the car drove appropriately for a $100,000 car, which means this drives uh, way more than appropriately for an $84,000 car. Um, yeah, nice. Coming in through the uh, roundabouts here in comfort mode. Just great steering uh, uh, ratio. Really like the weighting of it. No feedback through there. Very hard to tell what's going on. And while we approach the canyons as well, we need to talk about the tires that are on this car because tires are the most important part of, of handling in a vehicle. Or one of them, I should say. And we are on Michelin Pilot Alpine, I think, 5. Anyway, winter tires. Not summer ones. But that's good because it's 32 degrees and... Uh, <coughs> and just about to start snowing. So we need to make sure we're on the right tires and we definitely are. So this is kind of a good winter test, not really a great summer test. The convertible that I drove had the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires on it, big fan of that tire. And so will the, sum, will the winter tires with the less weight handle better than the summer tires with more weight. I don't know. I also don't know what the weight difference is between the coupe and convertible. If you can find it somewhere, let me know. I've scoured the internet, can't find where the weight difference is between the two. So uh, let's go turn this thing up. What we're gonna do when we get on the canyons is we're gonna put the car into its Sport Plus setting. There is no race mode. Again, that comes in the performance package. What this does is it turns the exhaust on full. It puts AMG Dynamics, basically the handling dynamics, into full pro mode. There's three levels of traction control. You have on, uh, uh, sport, ESP Sport, which is how we're gonna run, and then full off. And if ESP Sport gets in our way, we'll go full off. Um, yeah, auto start stop off, just so we don't shut off a steaming hot engine. And then you can shift the gears manually when uh, you're just grabbing the paddles, which is great, like this. And in Sport Plus, it cracks the shifts, which is great. However, it will revert back to drive and it will upshift at redline in this mode. To ensure a full manual experience, there's a little icon here on the center display that's two gears with an M. I'm gonna click that, now I'm locked in manual fifth gear, manual fourth gear really nice on the downshifts. For a torque converter auto, the way that this does the shifts is great. Let's go hop on the canyon and uh, shred it up a little bit. Welcome to the canyons. Man, does this have some serious off the line performance. Crazy. The shifts, unbelievable. The power up top, woohoo, spicy. Here we go. 
definitely moves pretty good. Just taking it a little easy here, just to get used to the surface, make sure we're not uh, too cold outside. Right on that freezing point. Uh, roads are nice and warm though. Mid-range torque over the hill. Woo! As soon as you hit 5,500, man, this thing comes on boil, doesn't it? Right out to red line. Engine makes peak power at 6,100 for a turbo. That's pretty impressive for sure. Uh, here we go, big power. So very planted. Gotta say, I definitely feel that snow tire moving around underneath us a little bit. The shifts are astronomically quick. The downshifts have no effect. They just keep the car decelerating at the same pace. Braking performance, great. Now what we've learned in the cab is that when the brakes get, cool, uh, get hot, <laughs> they get hot real quick. So, uh, yeah, man, what a great car for this, though. Let's use that mid-range to get out of this corner. Nice, puts the power down. All-wheel drive system working wonderfully. Climbing. Love it. Very good balance. Huge improvement over the convertible, I would say, just in terms of turning, suspension calibration. Yeah, so that little blast, and I'll pause so we can get past these cars and everything, but that little blast is a, I don't want to say a night and day difference from the convertible, but this is much more eager to get into and out of a corner than the convertible E53. So big change here. Another thing I should mention that I haven't yet is there is no 63 for 2021, maybe it'll come later on, available in Cooper convertible. Only sedan or wagon can you get the real you know, spicy ones. So um, no V8 here. And I actually love this inline six. I think the engine is a technical masterpiece and they've made it still engaging to fun and fun to drive. And the most important and crazy part to me is that it makes peak power so far up in the band, 6,100. So what that means when you're driving is it's, you're encouraged to rev it all the way out to red line and it gives you a, a really sense of satisfaction when you bring it all the way out to the red. And um, very, very good engine, uh, very agile car. Let's get past a few of these cars and shred up some more, shall we? All right, here we go, everyone's out of the way. Getting a little slippery up here. <laughs> Just how I like it, right on the edge. Um, one thing I have to mention and I've noticed it in the convertible and I thought it was maybe just like a weird individual vehicle defect in that particular one and I forgot to mention it in my review but this one does the same thing and it's weird is occasionally when you go to grab a downshift it will do not in this case it's very infrequent occasionally it will downshift two gears uh, it's almost as if you're doing a double pull but in reality you're only pulling it once and I uh, can't really figure out why that would be the case. Your foot, you know, I could see it if you were past the kick down switch, you pull the kick down paddle. Uh, doesn't do it here, some BMWs do that. Uh, where if you're past the kick down switch and pull the left paddle, it'll downshift all the way. Here, occasionally, it'll just downshift two gears. Not sure why. Anyway, kind of annoying when it does because sometimes I like to ride this really meaty torque band like here up the hills. Yeah, <laughs> great torque band. See there, it just did it. I pulled it once and it was like Whoop. No idea why, um, why it does that sometimes. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty frustrating. So, I thought it was something to do with the paddle on the steering wheel. Anywho, just enjoying a nice morning cruise up the hill. And uh, man, is it uh, starting to get snowy right around here. Yep, you can see the snow on the trees. This is usually when we, uh, when the weather starts getting worse. Windshield's starting to get a little icy. I can hear it scraping up there. Let's just warm that up for a second. Foggy. Let's try the braking performance, shall we? 65 miles an hour, no one's around, and 
very traction limited brakes. Great brake pedal feel. Uh, I wouldn't say it's overly firm and it does give a lot of force feedback. You feel great ABS through the pedal, which is very important. So many cars don't do this. Uh, for being a performance car and Mercedes, I would expect the brakes to feel pretty good. However, when you do get that really hard pedal feel, you can push through it. So it is slightly squishier than I would really prefer. And uh, I think it's getting too foggy for us to really even uh, continue driving and having fun and our windshield's fogging up here. So what do you say we head back down the hill and jump on the highway? We've already learned you know, engine performance, everything like this. If you watch our E53 review, uh, he, or I should say convertible review here in the coupe, uh, very much the same except much more agile in and out of corners really fun actually but no chance of oversteer uh, this car reverts to understeer no matter what you do you throw it into a corner and even in like snow and mud situations um, you really gotta like get up this thing to get it to kick the back end out that's with traction control off dynamics and pro so I would spec one personally with that performance package that gives you drift mode because that's how I would drive it <laughs> a little crazy all the time love it see you on the highway now you join us on the highway in the E-Class and it is, <laughs> you know, typical German hammer, just eat up the miles for sure. So let's test some of the driver assistance, make sure we're on. So I have the speed locked in at 75. We have the adaptive cruise control on the closest uh, setting. I'm going to put the display into its driver assistance full mode. It will, um, because the distance in this car works like most, where the distance levels are a time-based interval, it will actually tell you how many feet away uh, that it's going to try and keep the car, and this will get closer the slower you go, and farther away the faster you go, of course. Now this will also do lane changes, so I'm cruising, I'm just going to click the lane change to the right, so you put the turn signal on all the way, makes lane changes, and then you cancel when you're done. Really neat. Uh, now, as we're still driving on the system a little bit, let's talk about quietness and comfort and ride quality. So this particular car is on not the stock tires. It's on the winter tires. They're Michelin Pilot Alpine tires. We've mentioned this uh, when we were in the canyons, of course. And this really kind of hinders the car a bit, I think. You know, having a snow tire in a 60 degree day, it's certainly a little bit louder, not as refined. And you do hear a lot of feedback coming through on these bumps. It's not as quiet and serene as you would expect a Mercedes to be, to be totally transparent. It, the suspension is on the firm side. We're backed off into the most comfortable setting, but it's still an AMG, uh, you know, by heart. And uh, you do feel that. You feel the bumps. It doesn't waft. You don't get this floating feeling. And, uh, you know, I think that's okay for this kind of car. It's a coupe that is a uh, performance-oriented coupe. It seems to be doing well. Now, in terms of seating position, comfort, you know, could you go on a long road trip in this car? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, revs sit nice and low. We're talking well under 2,000 RPM at 75. You can see the adaptive cruise control is keeping a really nice distance between us and the Subaru Crosstrek in front of us. I have it on the closest setting, and it's actually fairly close, which is great. Some systems put way too much distance on the closest, and you're constantly pushing it to get up so people don't cut in. I think it's really... Uh, uh, actually a great system. The active steering is quite nice as well. So there's two levels of active steering. One, you can have it set just for the car to do lane departure assistance. So this is like if you hit a line, it'll push you back in. And then there is uh, lane keeping or active lane centering, which is indicated by a green steering wheel icon in two hands. Now this steering wheel is actually capacitive, which is super neat. So it's not looking for torque in the rack to see if I'm paying attention. It's looking for actual electrical touch uh, coming from my skin on the steering wheel. So that is a really neat uh, feature. Also, if you hit the turn signal, you can go just to the point of resistance and it will move over. You can see it's slowed down a little bit, put some distance in for that Lexus, and we moved over. Really a very smooth lane change. Uh, one of the best lane changes I've experienced. The car also checks for blind spots, so there's blind spot monitoring. And this system, you know, we can bump it up to 80 miles an hour now. Just a freaking awesome system for going long distance on the highway. You can see great lane centering. Just touch the wheel every once in a while. Nice and uh, just dead straight in the lane. You can see no wobbling here. A lot of systems, especially the Hyundai Kia systems that come to mind that I've been 
testing recently do a lot of lane wobble they have uh, you know just weird feeling going down the lane this is rock solid very German approach to lane centering and it does lane changes you don't need any more than this on the highway I think uh, really a great system great car to munch up the miles in and uh, yeah the, the two things I'd really love and I'd love to drive a coupe on summer tires to test but would be um, uh, noise on the highway is a, is a little bit louder than I would expect uh, no wind noise though zero wind absolutely you know at all really nice just a lot of road tire noise coming through and then a little bit softer suspension but this is the AMG one if you get the E400 coupe or an E300 it's gonna be much smoother than this car especially if you get the ones with the air suspension which this car has it's just a sport tuned air suspension so uh, see now it's asking me to touch the wheel I just want to see what happens if I don't this is a test I always do I'm gonna cover the wheel though it's flashing at me it took a while for it to come up now it's like driving on the edge I get a red thing, and now it's back to active lane centering. I didn't touch the wheel. So it just beeped at me, freaked out, shut off, pushed me back into the lane with lane departure, and now the system is back on. How about that? <laughs> Here, now it's beeping at me again. Let's see if it does the same thing. No auditory warning. It's just kind of wiggling a little bit, not driving super steady. Uh, yeah, just, just says, you know, more graphics, please touch the wheel. There's my first auditory chime, second chime, third chime, fourth chime. Will this just go all day? I don't know. Fifth chime. It's still steering, barely. I'm going to take over here. Looks like it would just keep going. Um, that's an interesting one. So, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed the E53 as much as I have.